receive the justice they deny others. They'll be judged according to the evidence presented in this court. The prosecution has nothing more. Herr Rolf will make the opening statement for the defense. In the Supreme Court of Canada, on appeal from the Court of Appeal of Alberta. Between Gerald Key Applicant Appellant and Law Society of Alberta College of Physicians and Surgeons of Alberta Attorney General of Alberta Respondents Respondents. Notice of Motion for Reconsideration of Application for Leave to Appeal filed by Gerald Key, Applicant based on the rules of the Supreme Court of Canada Rule 73, Rule 92.1 Amendment on April 12, 2022, from March 17, 2022. Take notice that Gerald Key hereby applies for leave to the Supreme Court of Canada under the rules of the Supreme Court of Canada Rule 73, for an order to reconsider the 2. February 17, 2022 application for leave to appeal dismissal or any further or other order that the court may deem appropriate. And further take notice that the August 4, 2021 application for leave to appeal was made on the following grounds. 1. The application involved the questions with the significant public importance for the issues of law concerning the ability of a government respondent to mischievously and maliciously bar a valid charter section 15. 1. Claim with the improper and unconstitutional abuse of the civil practice note number 7, paragraph 6, request for order. Specifically, that involves the right of a claimant to the vindication of his and the infringed Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms Section 15. 1. Equality before and under law and equal protection and benefit of law, equality rights of his father, A.J. R. Key, the onus on the respondents to justify those infringements with respect to the Charter Section 1, Rights and Freedoms in Canada, the available remedies with respect to the Charter Section 24. 1 enforcement of guaranteed rights and freedoms, and the read-in of the Constitution Act, 1982, Section 52, Primacy of Constitution of Canada. 2. The issues of the Charter Section 15, 1, and 24, 1, were argued before the Court of Queen's Bench of Alberta and the Court of Appeal of Alberta, in the October 24, 2019 brief and authorities of the applicant, and the August 31, 2020 factum of the appellant, respectively. However, 
as a result of the court procedures subsequent to the mischievous and malicious initiation by the respondents of the civil practice note number 7, paragraph 6, the facts in those documents were unreasonably disregarded by the courts. The lower court declared that it was not required to consider the evidence. The superior court declared that the beyond a reasonable doubt inculpatory and exculpatory evidence provided in the August 31, 2020 extracts of key evidence and application for new evidence was irrelevant and that the lower court did not err in declining to consider that relating to the Charter Section 15, 1, breaches and the Criminal Code of Canada contraventions. 3. 3. The applicant is a self-represented litigant a private prosecutor, and a member of an ethnic group that has experienced the historical discrimination, the African immigrants and the children of the African immigrants, vulnerable to the discrimination by the public officials. The human dignity of the applicant has been infringed by the mischievous and malicious chicanery of the respondents, in abuse of their enabling statutory provisions. He has approached the Supreme Court of Canada in good faith, and in the public interest, and seeks to have these complex and sensitive issues resolved in the court as a matter of the significant national consequence to all of the Canadian citizens, and in particular, of the significant international consequence to all of the African immigrants, and the children of the African immigrants in Canada, who are vulnerable to the unjustified and undeterred infringements of the Charter. Section 15, 1. For there exists the substantial and appropriate record, supported by the beyond a reasonable doubt facts and evidence, and the relevant public interest factors, for the court to determine all of these issues relating to the Charter Section 15, 1, the Criminal Code of Canada, and the International Bill of Human Rights Article 1, Discrimination, Employment and Occupation. Dated at St. Albert, Alberta, Canada this 12th day of April, 2022. Signed by Underscore 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 on applicant to the motion. Gerald Key P.O. Box 29, St. Albert, Alberta, Canada. 4. T8 N1 N2 Telephone, 780-807. 8224 email, Austin Estate at Outlook.com self-represented litigant. Original to, The Registrar. Copies to, Michael Marion Borden Latner Gervais LLP Centennial Place, East Tower 1600, 520 3rd Avenue Southwest Calgary, Alberta, Canada T2P0R3 Telephone, 403-323-9464 email. M. Marion at blg.com Council for the Law Society of Alberta. Nadia Effendi Borden Latner Gervais LLP World Exchange Plaza 1300 to 100 Queen Street, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada K1P1J9 Telephone, 613 787 3562 Email, Nefendi at blg.com Agent for the Law Society of Alberta. Martin Joseph Redman Shores Jardin LLP Suite 2250 Bell Tower 10104 to 105 Avenue Edmonton, Alberta, Canada T5J0H8 Telephone, 780-702-4274 Email, Joseph at ShoresJardine.com Council for the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Alberta. Andrea Simmons Attorney General of Alberta Legal Services Division, Civil Litigation 9th Floor Peace Hills Trust Tower 10011 to 109 Street Edmonton, Alberta, Canada T5J3S8 Telephone 780.422.8787 Email, Andrea.Simmons at gov.of.ca Council for the Attorney General of Alberta. 5. Notice to the respondents to the motion. A respondent to the motion may serve and file a response to this motion within 10 days after service of the motion. If no response is filed within that time, the motion would be submitted for consideration to a judge or registrar, as the case may be. If the motion is served and filed with the application for leave to appeal, then the respondents may serve and file the response to the motion with the response to the application for leave to appeal. 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Table of contents pages notice of motion for reconsideration of application for leave to appeal. One form 23A. Six affidavit of motion. Seven table of contents. Ten documents in support December 1, 1974 letter AJR key to CPSA registrar. 18 December 4, 1974 letter LHLE rich to AJR key. 19 January 9, 1975 Alberta Medical Register Registration, AJR Key. 2019 75.07 CPSA Report from Council, CPSA Special Register Legislation. 21 September 2, 1977 Letter HL Irving to LHL Irish CCDJ Boyer, Donald. 27 September 30, 1977 Letter LHLE Rich to HL Irving CC DJ Boyer, Donald. 29 August 23, 1988 Aviation Incident Report, AJR Key. 30 July 31, 1995 Letter AJR Key to DE Chatse. 31. October 31, 1996 CPSA Notice to Practitioner, AJR Key. 33. November 27, 1996 Letter AJR Key to Northwestern Health Services Region, NHSR. 35 January 13, 1997 CPSA Investigating Committee Hearing Recommendations of Investigating Committee. 36 September 15, 1997 Letter G.K. Schmidt to L.R. Allhauser. 45 November 20, 1997 December 4, 1997, December 18, 1997 Notes from A.J. Arkey 46 December 4, 1997 CPSA Notice of Suspension Pending Investigation, A.J. Arkey 47 September 18, 1975 to September 27, 1976 J.M. Goertzen Hospital Attendance Records 48 June 15, 1996 to July 4, 1996 J.M. Goertzen Hospital Attendance Records. 49. 11. January 2, 1998 J.M. Goertzen Hospital Attendance Records. 50 February 17, 1998 to February 28, 1998 J.M. Goertzen Mental Health Records. 51 March 9, 1998 Letter L.R. Allhauser to A.J. Arkey. 53 March 10, 1998 CPSA Notice to Practitioner, A.J. Arkey. 54 May 1, 1998 Letter Committee for the Preservation of St. Teresa Hospital, CPSTH, to Government of Alberta Acting Deputy Minister of Health. 56 September 11, 1998 Alberta Human Rights and Citizenship Commission, Otter C, Complaint Response, CPSA President, C.H. Harley, and D.J. Boyer, Donald. 57 September 15, 1998 Otter C Complaint, A.J. Arkey. 62 September 22, 1998 Letter Otter C to A.J. Arkey. 64 September 27, 1998 Note from A.J. Arkey. 65 April 29, 1999 CPSA Investigating Committee Hearing Order of Counsel. 66 July 7, 1999 Letter D.R. Cranston to A.J. Arkey. 79 July 14, 1999 Letter D.P. Mellon to D.R. Cranston. 80 July 14, 1999 Letter D.P. Mellon to D.J. Boyer, Donald. 81 November 27, 1999 CBC News article, J. Schneeberger. 82 J. Schneeberger Wikipedia. 83 February 14, 2000 Letter T. L. Howell to A.J. Arkey. 85 March 2, 2000 Letter D. Broda to A.J. Arkey. 86 April 10, 2000 Letter L. R. Allhauser to A.J. Arkey. 87 February 26, 2001 Letter C. D. Boyer to D. P. Mallon C. C. L. R. Allhauser. 88 April 10, 2001 Letter L. R. Allhauser to A.J. Arkey C. C. D. P. Mallon. 
89-2001.05 CPSA Messenger, Alhauser Resignation, Key Discipline Report. 92001.05 CPSA Messenger Search Engine Results. 93. 12. April 17, 2002 Letter R.A. Burns to A.J. Arkey. 94 May 5, 2002 Letter Concerns Citizens Action Group Tall Creek, Cash, to Government of Alberta Minister of Health. 95 September 26, 2002 Letter F.L. Shoots to A.J. Arkey. 96 February 3, 2003 Letter B.D. Ward to A.J. Arkey. 97 March 24, 2003 Letter J. E. Swinierski to A. J. R. Key. 99 July 9, 2003 CPSA Certificate of Agreement and Undertaking, A. J. R. Key. 100 July 15, 2003 Letter R. A. Burns to A. J. R. Key. 101 2003.09 CPSA Messenger, K. A. Missouri Appointment. 102 December 15, 2003 Letter B.D. Ward to David Thompson Regional Health Authority, ZRA. 104 December 15, 2003 Letter B.D. Ward to A.J. Arkey. 105 2004.01 Alberta Health Reform Implementation Team Final Report, Alhauser. 109 January 6, 2005 Letter K. A. Missouri to A.J. Arkey. 110. January 26, 2005 Letter A.J. Key to K.A. Missouri. 112 January 28, 2005 Letter K.A. Missouri to A.J. Key. 113 February 18, 2005 Letter K.A. Missouri to A.J. Key. 114 March 2, 2005 Letter K.A. Missouri to C.D. Boyer. 115 March 10, 2005 Letter K. A. Missouri to A. J. R. Key. 117 March 14, 2005 Letter K. A. Missouri to A. J. R. Key. 118 June 15, 2005 CPSA Investigating Committee Hearing Order of Council. 121 June 24, 2005 Resignation Letter P. R. Flint. 129 2005.07 CPSA Messenger, PR Flynn Resignation. 130 July 20, 2005 Letter H Hodes to AJ Arkey. 132 July 20, 2005 CPSA Notice to Practitioner, AJ Arkey. 133. 13. July 26. 2005 Letter C. D. Boyer to A. J. R. Key. 137 June 15, 2005 CPSA Investigating Committee Hearing Findings and Recommendations. 139 September 19, 2005 Letter C. D. Boyer to A. J. R. Key. 144 September 19, 2005 Letter T. W. Thiemann to A. J. R. Key. 145 September 27, 2005 Letter Court of Appeal of Alberta to A.J. Arkey. 146 2005.11 CPSA Messenger, B.D. Ward Appointment, Dr. V05 Discipline Report. 149 December 6, 2005 Letter K.A. Missouri to A.J. Arkey. 150 January 13, 2006 Letter W.S. McCall to A.J. Arkey. 151 March 10, 2006 Court of Appeal of Alberta Judgment, A.J. Arkey. 152 March 20, 2007 Letter F.L. Schutz to A.J. Arkey. 155 April 7, 2007 Letter A.J. Arkey to F.L. Schutz. 172 2007.05 Facts Relevant to Application for Re-Registration, A.J. Arkey. 173. June 21, 2007 CPSA Council Meeting, A.J. Arkey. 175. July 3, 2007 Letter A.J. Arkey to T.W. Thiemann. 177 July 4, 2007 Letter A.J.R. Key to J.E. Bell. 
178 July 9, 2007 Letter Alberta Ombudsman to A.J. Arkey 180 July 18, 2007 Letter Alberta Ombudsman to A.J. Arkey 181 July 31, 2007 Letter A.J. Arkey to T.W. Thiemann 182 October 2, 2007 Letter Alberta Health and Wellness to A.J. Arkey 184 October 11, 2007 Reference Letter A.J. Arkey from B.E. McPhail to D.C. Peary 185 October 25, 2007 Government of Alberta Review Panel Decision, A.J. Arkey 186 May 15, 2008 Letter A.J. Arkey to R.W. Lodgen 191 May 30, 2008 Letter T.W. Thiemann to A.J. Arkey 193 14 November 21, 2008 Letter R.W. Lodgen to A.J. Arkey 194 November 21, 2008 Letter A.J. Arkey to T.W. Thiemann 195 November 27, 2008 Letter T.W. Thiemann to A.J. Arkey 196 December 6, 2008 Letter A.J. Arkey 197 January 15, 2009 Letter A.J. Arkey to R.W. Lodgen 198 2009 Dual Citizenship Certificate, A.J. Arkey, Ghana, Canada 200 March 13, 2009 Reference Letter A.J. Arkey from G. Oakolo 201 June 8, 2009 Letter F.L. Schutz to A.J. Arkey 202 May 29, 2010 Obituary P. Underwood 203 October 21, 2011 Bankruptcy Absolute Order of Discharge, A.J. Arkey 204 May 6, 2012 Obituary B. D. Ward 205 November 28, 2012 CBC News Article, B. E. McPhail 206 December 4, 2012 Unsolved Murders Slash Missing People Blog, B. E. McPhail 208 December 11, 2012 Obituary B. E. McPhail 210 December 12, 2012 CTV Edmonton News Article, B. E. McPhail 211 AJ Key Gravesite 212 Post 2013.06.18 Republication of 2001.05 CPSA Messenger Discipline Report 213 January 15, 2014 LSA News Release, L. R. Allhauser 214 December 21, 2014 Obituary D. J. Boyer, Donald 216 C. D. Boyer Profile 219 LHL Rich Contact Information 220 July 22, 2015 Provincial Court of Alberta Information CPSA and L. R. Allhauser 221 July 22, 2015 Provincial Court of Alberta Scheduling Notice 222 August 14, 2015 Provincial Court of Alberta Information CPSA and L. R. Allhauser 223 15 August 14, 2015 Provincial Court of Alberta Scheduling Notice 224 September 10, 2015 Provincial Court of Alberta Transcript 225 2016.09 CPSA Messenger, T.W. Thiemann Retirement Announcement 240 September 9, 2016 Edmonton Journal Article, T.W. Thiemann 241 September 27, 2016 Provincial Court of Alberta Information, CPSA and L. R. Allhauser 242 October 28, 2016 Provincial Court of Alberta Scheduling Notice 243 November 3, 2016 Letter Assistant Deputy Minister of Justice to Applicant 244 November 10, 2016 Provincial Court of Alberta Judicial Directions 
245 November 18, 2016 Calgary Herald article, K. A. Mazurek. 247 November 18, 2016 Government of Canada Opioid Conference Agenda, K. A. Mazurek. 249 November 21, 2016 Letter S. J. Bykwich to Applicant. 252,017.01 CPSA Messenger, S. McLeod Appointment. 251 January 12, 2017 Edmonton Sun Article, S. McLeod. 253. August 23, 2017 Letter S. J. Bykwich to Applicant. 255. May 1, 2018 Letter Attorney General of Alberta to Applicant. 256 February 3, 2019 G. O. Acolo Obituary. 257 March 25, 2019 LSA Appeal Reply, S. J. Bykwich. 258 D. R. Cranston Profile, LSA President. 261 LSA Executive Committee Member List, D.R. Cranston, Elway Silenco. 264 Elway Silenco LSA Profile. 265 B. Melnick LSA Profile. 266 W. Pavlik LSA Profile. 267 D.J. Boyer, Douglas, Profile. 268. 16. LSA Conduct Committee Member List, D.J. Boyer, Douglas, G. Buick, W. Pavlik, L. Way Silenko. 270 June 17, 2020 Court of Appeal of Alberta Appeal Record, Cover Page. 272 June 17, 2020 Request for Disqualification of Judge, F. L. Schutz. 273 July 8, 2020 CBC News Article, CPSA, W. Wessels. 283 August 31, 2020 Court of Appeal of Alberta Factum of the Appellant, Cover Page. 291 August 31, 2020 Court of Appeal of Alberta Book of Authorities of the Appellant, Cover Page. 292 August 31, 2020 Court of Appeal of Alberta Extracts of Key Evidence of the Appellant, Cover Page. 293 August 31, 2020 Court of Appeal of Alberta Application for New Evidence of the Appellant, Cover Page. 294 October 30, 2020 Court of Appeal of Alberta Factum of the Respondent, LSA, Cover Page. 295 October 30, 2020 Court of Appeal of Alberta Book of Authorities of the Respondent, LSA, Cover Page. 296 October 30, 2020 Court of Appeal of Alberta Factum of the Respondent, CPSA, Cover Page. 297 October 30, 2020 Court of Appeal of Alberta Factum of the Respondent, Attorney General of Alberta, Cover Page. 298 August 4, 2021 Supreme Court of Canada Application for Leave to Appeal, Cover Page. 299 Excerpt from On the Genealogy of Morality. 300 Excerpt from Nazis and the Occult. 303 Statement of Argument. 310 Supreme Court of Canada Judgment February 17, 2022 Supreme Court of Canada Application for Leave to Appeal Dismissal. 320. 17. Documents in support. 18. 19. 20. 21. 22. 23. 24. 25. 26. 27. 28. 29. 30. 31. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 
46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119, 120, 121, 122, 123, 124, 125, 126, 127, 128, 129, 130, 131, 132, 133, 134, 135, 136, 137, 138, 139, 140, 141, 142, 143, 144, 145, 146, 147, 148, 149, 150, 151, 152, 153, 154, 155, 156, 157, 158, 159, 160, 161, 162, 163, 164, 165, 166, 167, 168, 169, 170, 171, 172, 173, 174, 175, 176, 177, 178, 179, 180, 
181, 182, 183, 184, 185, 186, 187, 188, 189, 190, 191, 192, 193, 194, 195, 196, 197, 198, 199, 200, 201, 202, 203, 204, 205, 206, 207, 208, 209, 210, 211, 212, 213, 214, 215, 216, 217, 218, 219, 220, 221, 222, 223, 224, 225, 226, 227, 228, 229, 230, 231, 232, 233, 234, 235, 236, 237, 238, 239, 240, 241, 242, 243, 244, 245, 246, 247, 248, 249, 250, 251, 252, 253, 254, 255, 256, 257, 258, 259, 260, 261, 262, 263, 264, 265, 266, 267, 268, 269, 270, 271, 272, 273, 274, 275, 276, 277, 278, 279, 280, 281, 282, 283, 284, 285, 286, 287, 288, 289, 290, 291, 292, 293, 294, 295, 296, 297, 298, 300, 
301. On the genealogy of morality at page 47. A compromise with the anger of those immediately affected by the wrongdoing, and therefore an attempt to localize the matter and head off further or more widespread participation and unrest, attempts to work out equivalence and settle the matter, the composidio, above all, the will, manifesting itself ever more distinctly, to treat every offense as being something that can be paid off, so that, at least to a certain degree, the wrongdoer is isolated from his deed. 302 303 304 Nazis and the Occult by Paul Roland at pages 47 to 50 No history of the Third Reich, occult or otherwise, would be complete without at least a brief mention of two men who were a profound influence on Hitler and Nazi ideology, composer Richard Wagner and philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. The former inspired Hitler with the idea that his war against the communists and Jews was a mystical crusade, while the latter provided him with the belief that there was an intellectual argument to justify his global ambitions and a logical basis for his fanatical beliefs. He equated democracy with mediocrity, degradation, and the diminution of those whose strength of purpose should allow them to rule over the weak and live beyond the constraints of human concepts such as good and evil. But for all his urgings of youth to throw off the shackles of conformity, he feared unlimited state control and anti-Semitism made him physically sick, it is a matter of honor with me to be absolutely clean and unequivocal in relation to anti-Semitism, namely opposed to it, as I am in my writings. 305 306 307 308 309 310 Statement of Argument one rules of the Supreme Court of Canada Rule 73, 1, Reconsideration of Application for Leave to Appeal, provides 1. There shall be no reconsideration of an application for leave to appeal unless there are exceedingly rare circumstances in the case that warrant consideration by the court. 2. The Supreme Court of Canada File No. 39840, Key v. Law Society of Alberta, LSA, College of Physicians and Surgeons of Alberta, CPSA, Attorney General of Alberta, 2021, filed on August 4, 2021, and unreasonably, incorrectly, and erroneously dismissed on 2022.02.17,2 is an internationally and nationally significant legal matter that involves the exceedingly rare circumstances. These circumstances include a. The contravention of the International Bill of Human Rights Article 1 by the Canadian public officials, the CPSA registrars, LHLE Rich and LR. Alhauser, with the discriminatory and incorrect special register registration of a CPSA registrant, an African immigrant to the Canada, AJR Key, and the failure of the courts in Canada to recognize that international significance. B. The failure of the superior courts in Canada to exercise their judicial duty, as the courts of competent jurisdiction, to determine whether the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms Section 15, 1, Equality Before and Under Law and Equal Protection and Benefit of Law 3 has been breached, and if the respondents have infringed the human dignity of AJR Key and the applicant. See the persistent discord between the Provincial Court of Alberta and the Superior Courts of Criminal Jurisdiction as to whether or not the Criminal Code of Canada has been contravened by the CPSA against AJR Key. D. The abuse of the civil practice note number 7, paragraph 6, request for order 4. Underscore 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 one rules of the Supreme Court of Canada rule 73, 1, 2 C February 17, 2022 Supreme Court of Canada application for leave to appeal dismissal. P. 323 Canadian Charter of Right and Freedom Section 15, 1, 4 Civil Practice Note No. 7, Paragraph 6, 311. That mischievously deceived the courts, maliciously defamed the applicant, and allowed for the respondents to disrupt the case, 
and to exploit a loophole in our charter legislation that permitted them to prevent the courts of competent jurisdiction and the superior courts of criminal jurisdiction from exercising their judicial duty to examine the facts and the evidence relating to the Criminal Code of Canada contraventions and the Charter Section 15, 1, breaches, and to circumvent the onus on the respondents to provide the Charter Section 1, rights and freedoms in Canada 5 justifications for those breaches. 3 combined, these exceedingly rare circumstances make key, 2021, one of the most complex and sensitive legal cases in the history of the Canada. The illegitimate dismissals and stay of proceedings by the public officials and the courts against the applicant are not due to the lack of the substantial merit, the facts, or the evidence. Rather, those are due to the extreme egregiousness of the allegations that intimidates the public officials and the courts into the derelict of their public duties. As a result, the public officials and the courts evade their public duty to examine the facts and the evidence, and avoid the determination of whether their fellow public officials have breached the Charter, or contravene the Criminal Code of Canada. For with respect to the Criminal Code of Canada Section 788, Commencement of Proceedings 6 and Form 2, Information 7 The applicant does not need to repeat the information for the allegations against the CPSA, L.R. Alhajur, C.D. Boyer, and S.J. Bykwich. That is provided in the October 24, 2019 brief and authorities at paragraphs 182 to 229 comma 8 the August 31, 2020 factum at paragraphs 1 and 44 to 80 comma 9 and the August 4, 2021 application for leave to appeal at paragraph 1 comma 10 for the CPSA, L.R. Alhauser, and C.D. Boyer. That is provided in the October 24, 2019 brief and authorities at paragraphs 87 to 181, 11 the August 31, 2020 factum at paragraphs 2 and 81 to 87, 12 and the August 4, 2021 application for leave to appeal at paragraph 2, 13 for SJ. Bykwich. Underscore 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 five Canadian Charter of Right and Freedom Section 16 Criminal Code of Canada Section 7887 Criminal Code of Canada Form 28C October 24, 2019 Brief and Authorities at Paragraphs 182 to 229 9C August 31st 2020 Factum at Paragraphs 1 and 44 to 80 10 C August 4, 2021 Application for Leave to Appeal at Paragraph 1 11 C October 24, 2019 Brief and Authorities at Paragraphs 87 to 181 12 C 2020.08.31 Factum at Paragraphs 2 and 81 to 87 13 C August 4, 2021 Application for Leave to Appeal at Paragraph 2 312. 5. In many other corrupt countries, the public officials are able to arbitrarily discriminate against and to infringe the human dignity of their citizens with the abuse and the contravention of their enabling statutory provisions. However, as of 1985, in Canada, the Charter Section 15, 1, was introduced into the constitutional legislation revolutionizing discrimination law throughout the world. According to the Charter Section 15, 1, that is illegal for the public officials in Canada to discriminate against and to infringe the human dignity of the Canadian citizens. 6. Induce at Boudreaux v. Nova Scotia, Department of Education, 2003, at paragraph 45, that stated 14. The purpose of reading of S23, 1, and also the ordinary meaning of the drafter's language make it clear that S24, 1, guarantees that there must always be a court of competent jurisdiction to hear anyone whose rights or freedoms have been infringed or denied, C. Nels v. Ontario, 1989, at P. 196, and Mills, Supra, at P. 881. The default court of competent jurisdiction is a superior court established under S-96 of the Constitution Act, 1867. It is also plainly contemplated in S-24, 1, 
that a court of competent jurisdiction will have the authority to grant a remedy that it considers appropriate and just in the circumstances. 7 in R.B. Mills, 1986, at pages 971 to 972, that stated 15. Nonetheless, it is the charter that governs, and if the ordinary procedures fail to meet the requirements of the charter wholly, then a means must be found to give it life. In Ashby v. White, 1703, at P 136, Hold C.J. instructs us that it is a vain thing to imagine a right without a remedy. The problem does not directly arise here, of course, because the Charter by S. 24, 1, provides that a court of competent jurisdiction may provide such remedy as it considers appropriate and just in the circumstances. But there must at all times be a court to enforce this remedy. The notion that the remedy must fail or be ineffective for lack of a competent court within the confines of the ordinary procedures for the administration of criminal justice can no more be imagined than can the notion of a right without a remedy. While, therefore, the trial court will ordinarily be the appropriate court to grant the remedy, situations can arise where a trial court has not yet been set at the time when a remedy is required, or where a court is an inappropriate forum to seek a remedy because it is itself implicated in the breach of a constitutional right. In such cases, the competent court must be the superior court of the province in the exercise of its inherent jurisdiction. To this extent, I agree with Lamer J on this issue. 8. Similar to the other public officials, the judges of the courts are shackled to the Constitution Act and must adhere to the Charter, without discrimination against the Canadian underscore 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 14 do set Boudreau v Nova Scotia Department of Education 2003 at paragraph 45 15 RB Mills 1986 at pages 971 to 972 313 Citizens. A court of the competent jurisdiction must be made available to the citizens of Canada whose charter rights and freedoms have been infringed. If a breach is discovered upon the proper examination by the court, with respect to the contextual factors identified in Law v. Canada, 1999, 16 then, the onus is on the accused public official to justify that Charter Section 15, 1, breach, with respect to the Charter Section 1, and to the contextual elements identified in R.B. Oaks, 1986.17 If the accused public official is unable to justify that breach, then, the Charter Section 24, 1, Enforcement of Guaranteed Rights and Freedoms 18 Remedy must be made available by the court to the claimant. The applicant was maliciously denied access to the courts with the abuse by the respondents of the Civil Practice Note No. 7, Paragraph 6. Since the ordinary procedures have failed to meet the requirements of the Charter fully, with the erroneous February 17, 2022 application dismissal, a means must be found to give that life. Therefore, the applicant has invoked the rules of the Supreme Court of Canada Rule 73. 9. Since its legislation in 1985, there has never been a more egregious breach of the Charter Section 15. 1. As that breached by the CPSA and L. R. Allhauser against H. A. R. Key. The spoliation of evidence by the Attorney General of Alberta and S. J. Bykwich, in addition to the violation of the Nemo Judex rule by the LSA and L. Way Silenco, and the failure of the LSA to order the court supervised LSA Independent Counsel investigation, are also the very serious breaches of the Charter Section 15. 1 that involves the criminal contraventions by the public officials and the unscrupulous efforts by the complacent and sympathizing public officials and courts responsible for the administration of justice to cover up and to suppress the truth about those criminal contraventions and Charter Section 15 1. Breaches That suppression of the truth directly implicates the CPSA, the LSA, the Attorney General of Alberta, the Court of Queens Bench of Alberta, the Court of Appeal of Alberta, and now, the Supreme Court of Canada. 
intend the criticism by the applicant of the public officials and the courts should not be interpreted as disrespect to, nor criticism of, the Canadian legislation. Rather, in the opinion of the applicant, many other countries could benefit from similar, if not identical, legislation. Due to his general respect for the legal institutions, and to the presumption of good faith towards underscore 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 sixteen law v Canada nineteen ninety nine at paragraph eighty eight seventeen R V Oaks nineteen eighty six at pages one hundred and thirty five to one hundred and forty eighteen Canadian Charter of Right and Freedom section twenty four one eight hundred and fourteen the court, the applicant passively invited the Supreme Court of Canada to exercise its jurisdiction and judicial duty to determine whether the Charter Section 15, 1, rights and freedoms of A.J. Arkey and of himself were infringed by the respondents. In a similar response to the lower courts, the Supreme Court exceeded its jurisdiction in declining to examine the facts and the evidence of the alleged Charter and Criminal Code of Canada contraventions and failed to exercise its judicial duty to determine whether the Charter Section 15, 1, rights and freedoms of A.J. Arkey, and of himself, were infringed by the respondents. 11. The Criminal Code of Canada Section 507.1, 1, referral when private prosecution, provides 19. A justice who receives an information laid under Section 504, other than an information referred to in subsection 507, 1. Shall refer it to a provincial court judge or, in Quebec, a judge of the Court of Quebec, or to a designated justice, to consider whether to compel the appearance of the accused on the information. 12. In many other corrupt countries, if a victim of crime approaches the police services, the accused is a public official, the police do not want to get involved, and ignore the facts and the evidence, then, the case is closed. The public official escapes the scrutiny and the prosecution, and the victim of crime suffers the further indignation. However, in Canada, if the police services demonstrate inertia and ignore a legitimate criminal allegation against a public official, then, with respect to the Criminal Code of Canada Section 507.1, the victim of crime could approach a Justice of Peace to schedule a preliminary hearing in a provincial court, criminal to invite a judge to examine the facts and the beyond a reasonable doubt evidence to determine, with the public interest factors identified by the prosecution services, if a criminal code of Canada contravention has occurred. However, in key, the prosecution services directed the illegitimate stay of proceedings against the CPSA and L.R. Allhauser, and obstructed justice. 13. After the Edmonton Police Services, EPS, ignored the applicant in 2015.06 and destroyed his witness statement on august 6 2015 the applicant approached the provincial court of alberta criminal with the criminal allegations against the cpsa and lr allhauser point 20 the agent of the attorney general of alberta assistant chief crown prosecutor e.m wheaton Underscore 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 nineteen criminal code of Canada section five oh seven point one one twenty C July twenty second two thousand and fifteen provincial court of Alberta information P two hundred and twenty one three hundred and fifteen mischievously misinformed the applicant that he could not speak to the judge and maliciously directed the stay of proceedings in bad faith on september 10 2015 the applicant returned to the court with the criminal allegations point 21 again e.m wheaton maliciously directed the stay of proceedings in bad faith the agent of the attorney general threatened the applicant that even if he provided the beyond a reasonable doubt evidence of a criminal contravention to the court of criminal jurisdiction, and the process was issued for an indictment and summons against the CPSA and L.R. Allhauser, the Crown will be directing a stay in any event. 22. 14 on November 10, 2016, 
the applicant testified in the Provincial Court of Alberta with the criminal allegations against the CPSA and L. R. Allhauser. Point 23 The Honorable Justice Maher examined the facts and the beyond reasonable doubt evidence of the criminal contraventions. Then, the court issued process for the indictment and summons to compel the appearance of the accused to answer to the criminal allegations on December 14, 2016. 24 However, on November 21, 2016, S.J. Mike which disregarded the relevant public interest factors, carried out the September 10, 2015 malicious threat by E.M. Wheaton, in bad faith, and directed the stay of proceedings, in any event. 25. 15 In the August 31, 2020 factum at paragraph 45, that stated 26. In the January 15, 2009 letter from AJR Key to Art Lodgen, that stated 27. 1. The College of Physicians and Surgeons of Alberta violated my rights by registering me, in a manner quite different to the other new college registrants at the time of my, first, registration with the college, by imposing unfair conditions to my registration. The conditions imposed, inappropriately, to my registration forced me to work in northern Alberta under difficult and extremely stressful conditions, working under these conditions ultimately impacted negatively on my health. This bad experience has subsequently led to some of the difficulties I have had with the college since. 2. The College of Physicians and Surgeons of Alberta knowingly and deliberately discriminated against me by registering me in a special register, instead of the regular. Underscore 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 twenty one C August fourteen, two thousand and fifteen Provincial Court of Alberta Information P two hundred and twenty three twenty two C September tenth, two thousand and fifteen Provincial Court of Alberta Transcript at page five, lines twenty one to twenty three P 23 C September 27, 2016 Provincial Court of Alberta Information P 24 C November 10, 2016 Provincial Court of Alberta Judicial Directions Pages 245 to 246 25 C November 21, 2016 Provincial Court of Alberta Stay of Proceedings P 25026 C August 31, 2020 Factum at Paragraph 4527 C January 15, 2009 Letter AJR Key to RW. Lodgen at Paragraphs 1, 2, and 4, pages 198 to 199. 316. Registered, in violation of the Medical Profession Act at the time. I was profoundly humiliated and angered by the college's action and this has had a lasting negative effect on me and has created some difficulties I have been having with the college. That special register did not exist at the time when I was seeking registration with the college. For the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Alberta recklessly and maliciously prosecuted me for sexual misconduct when no such event took place and without grounds found me guilty of sexual misconduct and then revoked my license to practice medicine. This was beyond belief. This matter was subsequently posted on the college's website for global exposure, the damage to my reputation was global, and it was also published in the local media. This damage to my reputation was enormous and the psychological damage to my family was unimaginable. I subsequently went through months and years of mental anguish of this matter and I am still haunted by it. 16 on December 1, 1974, AJR Key applied to the CPSA for the full registration in the Alberta Medical Register. 28 Contrary to the International Bill of Rights Article 1.8, on December 4, 1974, L.H. L.E. Rich misinformed AJR Key that he would be required to adhere to the conditions of a CPSA Special Register. 29 On January 9, 1975, the CPSA incorrectly registered AJR Key in the CPSA Special Register. 30 in 1975.07, 
the CPSA special register was legislated into the Medical Profession Act.31 The CPSA retroactively registered AJR Key with the special registration in the Alberta Medical Register from January 9, 1975 to April 29, 1999. Then, L.R. Alhauser initiated the malicious prosecution to remove AJR Key from the Alberta Medical Register. 32 Now, the Supreme Court of Canada wants the applicant to compensate the CPSA with the costs. 17 In the May 1, 2018 letter Attorney General of Alberta to applicant, the applicant discovered that S.J. Bike which destroyed the evidence provided to the prosecution services in the November 10, 2016 Provincial Court of Alberta exhibits S1, respondent copy. That stated 33. Underscore 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 twenty eight C December first, nineteen seventy four letter AJR key to CPSA P eighteen twenty nine C December fourth, nineteen seventy four letter LHLE Rish to AJR key P nineteen thirty C January nine, nineteen seventy five Alberta Medical Registration AJR key, P2031 C1975.07 CPSA report from counsel, pages 21 to 26 32 C Criminal Code of Canada section 465, 1, B, I, conspiracy to maliciously prosecute, and section 299 defamation of AJR key, by the CPSA registrar, L.R. Alhauser, with D.J. Boyer, Donald, and C.D. Boyer, 4, the false section 271 allegation by a mentally disordered patient, investigated by a mentally disordered CPSA investigator, P.R. Flynn, in obstruction of section 276, 3, pages 31 to 95, 129 to 131, 33 C. May 1st, 2018 letter Attorney General of Alberta to applicant, P.256, 317. I sent your inquiry of April 5, 2018, to my client. I am advised that the material you seek is not on their file and that any material you may have provided to the Crown was likely shredded according to applicable retention policy. 18 in the March 25, 2019 LSA appeal reply, S.J. Bike which lied to the LSA about never seeing exhibits S1, respondent copy, when those materials were used to determine whether or not to direct the November 21, 2016 stay of proceedings, and the August 23, 2017 refusal to recommence previously state proceedings.34 that stated 35. I do not recall if copies of the materials that are identified as Exhibit S1 on the provincial court file were also included in the Alberta Crown Prosecution Service, ACPS, filed when I received it after the process hearing in order to assess whether the private information filed by Mr. Key should be stayed. If copies of the materials were shredded according to applicable retention policy, that action cannot in any way be characterized as the destruction of incriminating evidence in order to obstruct the course of justice in any proceedings. 19 in the November 25, 2021 application for leave to appeal reply at paragraph 23, that stated 36. On November 21, 2016, S.J. Bike which maliciously carried out the September 10, 2015 malicious threat by E. Wheaton, ordered the stay of proceedings, and destroyed the evidence. In the 75 months to November 25, 2021, the truth about the CPSA and L.R. Alhauser has been suppressed, and the facts and the evidence have not been properly examined. With respect to section 97, 1, e, the applicant seeks the costs requested in the application for leave to appeal at paragraph 43. 20, the agent of the attorney general threatened to direct, and directed, the illegitimate stay of proceedings, destroyed the evidence, and lied to the LSA about never seeing that inculpatory evidence relating to the incrimination of the CPSA and L.R. Alhauser or the exculpatory evidence relating to the exoneration of AJR Key. Now, the Supreme Court of Canada wants the applicant to compensate the Attorney General of Alberta with the costs. 
21 in Nazis and the Occult by Paul Rowland at pages 47 to 50, that stated 37. Underscore 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 thirty four C August twenty third, two thousand and seventeen Provincial Court of Alberta refusal to recommence previously state proceedings, P two hundred and fifty five thirty five C March twenty fifth, two thousand and nineteen LSA appeal reply, by which Pages 258 to 260, 36 C November 25, 2021. Application for leave to appeal reply at paragraph 23, 37 C Nazis and the Occult by Paul Rowland at pages 47 to 50, pages 304 to 308, 318. No history of the Third Reich, occult or otherwise would be complete without at least a brief mention of two men who were a profound influence on Hitler and Nazi ideology, composer Richard Wagner and philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. The former inspired Hitler with the idea that his war against the communists and Jews was a mystical crusade, while the latter provided him with the belief that there was an intellectual argument to justify his global ambitions and a logical basis for his epinatical beliefs. 22 in on the genealogy of morality by Friedrich Nietzsche at page 47, that stated, 38. A compromise with the anger of those immediately affected by the wrongdoing, and therefore an attempt to localize the matter and head off further or more widespread participation and unrest, attempts to work out equivalents and settle the matter, the composidio, above all, the will, manifesting itself ever more distinctly, to treat every offense as being something that can be paid off, so that, at least to a certain degree, the wrongdoer is isolated from his deed. 23 A composidio involves the complacency and indifference towards an offense that permits a wrongdoer to escape justice. Never in the history of the Canada has a composidio of such an unprecedented magnitude been committed, as that performed by L. R. Allhauser. L. R. Allhauser discriminated against A.J. Key, and then, suppressed the truth about that. With the complacency and indifference by the public officials and the courts in Canada towards his Charter Section 15, 1, breach, and his Criminal Code of Canada contraventions, combined with the racist contempt against A.J. Key and the applicant, that composidio by L.R. Allhauser is manifested in the erroneous decisions by the public officials and the courts, in his favor. 24 The International Bill of Human Rights Article 1, Discrimination, Employment and Occupation, Convention, 1958, Number 111, provides 39. For the purpose of this convention the term discrimination includes, a, any distinction, exclusion, or preference made on the basis of race, color, sex, religion, political opinion, national extraction or social origin, which has the effect of nullifying or impairing equality of opportunity or treatment in employment or occupation, b, such other distinction, exclusion, or preference which has the effect of nullifying or impairing equality of opportunity or treatment in employment or occupation as may be determined by the member concerned after consultation with representative employers and workers' organizations, where such exist, and with other appropriate bodies. Underscore 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 thirty eight C on the genealogy of morality by Friedrich Nietzsche at page forty seven, pages three hundred and one to three hundred and two thirty nine International Bill of Human Rights Article one Discrimination Employment and Occupation Convention nineteen fifty eight Number 111. 319. 25. In the application for leave to appeal, the applicant did not concentrate on the fact that key, 2021, is also a legal matter with the international significance. The applicant wanted the court to concentrate on the national legislation of the Charter Section 15, 1, and the Criminal Code of Canada, and on the provincial legislation of the Civil Practice Note Number 7, and not on the international legislation. However, subsequent to the February 17, 2022 application dismissal, 
the applicant recognizes the need to emphasize the fact to the court that the case involves the international significance and consequences. The exceedingly rare circumstances involve an African immigrant physician to the Canada who was victimized with discrimination by the Canadian public officials, based on race, national extraction, and social origin, that had the effect of nullifying and impairing the equality of opportunity and treatment in his occupation as a physician in the Canada, contrary to the International Bill of Human Rights Article 1. 26. The passive invitation to the courts by the applicant has been met with the contempt and the disregard for his charter section 15, 1, equality rights, and those of AJRKI. That contempt by the courts has further infringed the human dignity of the applicant, a vulnerable member of our Canadian society, and has resulted in the erroneous and unjustifiable application and appeal dismissals. Due to that disrepute to the proper administration of justice in Canada, the presumption of good faith by the applicant towards the public officials and the courts no longer exists. What remains now is the presumption of bad faith towards the public officials and the courts, and the expectation of their unscrupulous and undeterred attempt to suppress the truth. 27. When the applicant complained about the CPSA and L. R. Allhauser, the respondents, and the courts in Alberta behaved like a sinister mob of the racist sympathizers and misfits in their petty and hopeless attempts to suppress the truth about the wrongdoings committed by their fellow public officials. No longer would the applicant provide the passive invitation to the courts to determine whether his charter section 15, 1, rights, and those of his father, have been infringed by the Canadian public officials. Now, in the current reconsideration of application for leave to appeal, with respect to our jurisprudence in Duce at Boudreau, 2003, at paragraph 45, and in Mills, 1986, at pages 971 to 972, the applicant provides the Supreme Court of Canada with the assertive demand that the court determine whether his, and the Charter Section 15, 1, rights of AJR key, have been infringed by the respondents, and whether the CPSA, L.R. Allhauser, C.D. Boyer, and S.J. Bikewich, have contravened the Criminal Code of Canada. 320. If I may say so, a more pertinent than legal basis for the case. I have the opening address of the French prosecutor before the International Military Tribunal. It is obvious that in a state organized along modern lines, responsibility is confined to those who act directly for the state. Since they alone are in a position to judge the legitimacy of the given orders, they alone can be prosecuted. I have another, from Professor Yarai's legal aspects, filed with a major war criminal. Now, in the of these, I don't see where the prosecution a really clear-cut case against the defense pertaining to the charges in the indictment. Regardless of the acts committed, we cannot make the interpretation that these defendants are really responsible for crimes against humanity. What do you think, Dan? Ken, we've been going over these points all day. If it isn't clear now, aren't you going to look at these precedents? Aren't you interested at all? Yes, I'm interested, Curtis. You are speaking of crimes against humanity and saying that the defendants were not responsible for their acts. I'd like you to explain that to me. I've just been explaining it. Well, maybe. But all I've heard is a lot of legalistic double talk and rationalization. You know, Curtis, when I first became a judge, I... I knew there were certain people in town I wasn't supposed to touch. I knew that if I was to remain a judge, this was so.